The sky over the battlefield was silent, except for the rolling rotor blades of the AH-64 Apache following a hostile tank. Ever since the introduction of the Hellfire, pilots or operators have needed to decide how to engage a target using the two main variants of the legendary missile at their disposal. The Romeo, laser-guided and deadly precise in clear conditions, or the Longbow, its radar unflinching through smoke and storm. But after decades of service, the legendary Hellfire missile has a replacement on the way in Lockheed Martin's AGM-179 Joint Air-to-Ground Missile. The JAGM builds upon the Hellfire's low-cost, high-accuracy legacy by mashing multiple targeting systems into a single weapon. With the AGM-179 JAGM, the pilots can simply engage targets with the same missile regardless of the environment or situation. This is the future of warfare, where one missile does it all. No more choices, just swift, precise, and lethal action. In the 1970s, when the United States Army was seeking an effective anti-tank weapon for rotorcraft like the Vietnam War classic AH-64 Apache, the Martin Marietta Helleborn Laser Fire and Forget Missile, or Hellfire, soon became a staple of the U.S. military and beyond. When tested in battle, the Hellfire was so effective that new iterations of the technology expanded its original role. Today, the missile is the primary 100-pound class air-to-ground precision weapon for the United States Armed Forces and many other nations. In addition to helicopters, the missile has been fitted aboard fixed-wing aircraft, watercraft, and even land-based launchers in a surface-to-air capacity. One variant, the AGM-114R9X, swaps its explosive warhead for a set of six deployable 18-inch blades. Now a family of Hellfire missiles, the most used variants include the AGM-114R Hellfire II, commonly known as the Hellfire Romeo, and the AGM-114L Longbow Hellfire. These two missiles share several elements, including warheads, yet they differ dramatically when it comes to targeting, forcing users to maintain separate inventories of each. The Romeo missile is quite similar to its predecessors, using a highly accurate semi-active laser guidance system to deliver 20 pounds of explosives to targets over six miles away. This wonder weapon is the primary air-to-surface weapon for several platforms in different branches, like the Army's AH-64 Apache, the Marine Corps' AH-1W Super Cobra, and the Air Force's long-loitering MQ-9 Reaper drone. Meanwhile, the AGM-114L Longbow swaps out the laser guidance system. Instead, it uses a millimeter wave radar that allows high accuracy performance beyond line of sight ranges, or in environments with bad weather or heavy smoke, which can compromise the efficacy of the Romeo variant. While the former tends to be the general purpose air to surface missile in Army and Marine inventories, the Longbow is the main anti tank weapon system for the world renowned tank hunter Apache helicopter. However, as warfare evolved and the battlefield's demands grew more complex, despite the accuracy, the Army recognized the need for a more advanced, versatile weapon system. But replacing this icon of warfare would not be an easy job. In 2007, the Pentagon kickstarted a high-stakes contest to develop the next-gen Joint Air-to-Ground Missile, or JAGM, a project set to redefine military firepower. By the following year, aerospace titans Raytheon and Boeing had joined forces, earning a $125 million deal while Lockheed Martin, the creator of the Hellfire missile, secured a similar contract. Despite facing the chopping block in 2011 due to budget constraints and the Navy and Marine Corps temporarily pulling out of the project, the JAGM program clung to life. In 2013, the Army announced that Raytheon's contract would not continue, leaving Lockheed as the sole potential contractor. Fast forward to 2015. The designation AGM-179 was assigned to the JAGM program, and a low-rate initial production contract was approved in 2018. Until then, Hellfire missile operators would need to decide which of the two main variants to use. The Romeo, accurate only if and when it has a direct line of sight, or if there's bad weather or an enemy-made smokescreen, the Longbow's millimeter wave radar is more effective. But according to Lockheed Martin's Joey Drake, JAGM program director, this is all about to change. With this new missile, pilots can skip this question and simply engage targets with the same weapon, as it combines semi-active laser guidance and Longbow's millimeter wave radar into a single system paired with the already existing warhead, motor, and flight control system of the Romeo missile. As such, the mission gets completed, no matter the weather or situation. As stated by Drake, the AGM-179JAGM represents, quote, one missile, 
multiple platforms, multiple missions for all the services. Despite its promise, the weapon has overcome many obstacles and fine-tuning. During testing in the mid to late 2010s, the U.S. Army experienced several failures during live fire testing from an AH-64E Apache helicopter, including seeing the missile miss two targets. During a significant test, one of the four launches with a live warhead failed to detonate. According to reports, the service resolved those problems in subsequent testing and evaluation. In mid-2019, the Marine Corps struggled with JAGM aboard Bell AH-1Z Viper during an initial operational test and evaluation at Fort Hood and Edlin Air Force Base, Florida. During this, the Marines fired two shots, both of which did not hit boat targets at the center of the vessel and instead struck more toward the back. While the original plan called for a full-rate production announcement in 2021, the Marine Corps requested more time to complete platform integrations. But according to the Program Executive Officer for Missiles and Space, Major General Robert Raich, the delay did not affect the program's timeline. Finally, according to a Lockheed Martin statement from August 30, 2022, the Army and Marine Corps have declared the AGM-179 Joint Air-to-Ground Missile ready for full-rate production. By then, a little over a thousand missiles had been produced. This milestone also marks the completion of operational testing of the model in the Apache and Viper attack helicopters. Because the new AGM-179 shares a great deal with the Hellfires it's set to replace, it can be used with the existing launchers and infrastructure, and as such, will require very little training for ground crews and pilots. Additionally, having a two-in-one missile isn't only useful on the fighting ground, it's also great for the military budget. But this dual-mode weapon also means cutting down on the number of different weapons units have to keep handy while deployed, and from a logistics perspective, it's also an excellent interoperability advantage. In the event of a conflict, if America needs more ammunition for the fight, and Germany has a stockpile of it, it's a simple transfer, as both use the same rounds. This can also be applied to America's varied military branches. Deployed by the Army, Marines, and Air Force in a pinch, an Army Apache unit in need could draw JAGMs from a nearby Air Force Reaper unit with a surplus lying around until more munitions can be rolled out. And while hypersonic missiles and AI-powered drones are all the rage in defense development circles, the AGM-179 JAGM, although not as flashy, is just as important. In a major conflict with a superpower like China, advanced, costly military tech like $100 million boost glide weapons or cutting-edge stealth fighters would be strategically limited. While crucial, their high value and scarcity may mean that the Army will preserve them for pivotal moments rather than widespread deployment in such scenarios. Instead of these multi-million dollar stealth fighters, of which America only has a couple hundred, winning a fight between technologically developed industrial nations will come down to the quick and efficient use of already available systems. Financial attrition can be a devastating weapon in large-scale warfare, as proven in many 20th century conflicts. But with new and improved systems like the JAGM, the United States and its allies can ensure they have the firepower needed to win while still developing the firepower it will require for tomorrow's conflicts. Joey Drake, the Program Management Director of Air-to-Ground Missile Systems at Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control, said the decision to move to full-rate production signifies the program's maturity and the Army's confidence in their product. In the near future, they intend to integrate the JAGM into helicopters, unmanned aircraft, and air defense systems. Meanwhile, the company has already announced the JAGM-MR for medium range, a further improved version with a range of 10 miles without changing the missile's dimensions. The version also incorporates a tri-mode seeker, a technology seen in Raytheon's mid-2000s proposal, which was dropped due to cost factors, but has since become much more affordable. As stated by Jerry Broad, Vice President of Close Combat Systems at Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control, the JAGM has proven that it can be counted on when it matters most, both providing mission-focused offensive and defensive capabilities, and most importantly, maintaining a competitive edge against any potential adversaries. The transition from the Hellfire to the JAGM is akin to passing the torch. As the Hellfire, a symbol of 20th century warfare, hands over its duties to the JAGM, a weapon designed to confront the challenges of a new era with even greater precision and versatility, the stage is set for what may become the pillar of short-term warfare. The potential of this new weapon is endless. <laughs>